South Korean officials have confirmed their government is considering a peace treaty with the North, finally ending the armistice signed in the 1950s. The leaders of the two Koreas are preparing for a meeting later this month. Joining me now to discuss this and other developments is the Professor of Political Science, Robert E. Kelly, and he joins us from Busan in South Korea. Thank you very much for your for time having... this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Now, first up, we learned today that the US has already held talks uh, at what Donald Trump has described very high levels with North Korea in advance of his planned summit with Kim Jong-un. What more do we know about the nature of the discussions and their content? Yeah, right now it looks like it's mostly focusing around where they're going to have the summit, which has turned out to be a lot thornier and trickier than we thought. Um, Kim Jong-un is a dictator, obviously. Um, there's a lot of anxiety in North Korea that if you were to leave, you know, there might be some kind of coup or the army right revolt or something like that. Um, Kim Jong-un has only left North Korea one time when he we went to China a couple weeks ago, and that was only for a few days. So, um, but on the other hand, the atmospherics of an American president going to Pyongyang would just be terrible, right? So there've been, there's been a lot of struggle over where to put this, and that's what um, Secretary of State-designate uh, Pompeo was uh, was supposed to set up. Presumably, he's also setting up some kind of groundwork for the conference, but, you know, they've only got eight weeks, so they've got to move fast. Sure. And what uh, what what possible locations are being tossed around as the meeting place? Yeah, I think, um, well, they've discussed somewhere in Korea, right? I mean, along the DMZ would be the easy choice, right? Because both sides are sort of close to an ally, if you will, right? A sort of comfort zone, right? There's also been suggestion that somehow it should be um, in some kind of like neutral third party space like Switzerland or Singapore or something like that. I would be, I think one of the reasons why we haven't heard much about this in the last month since the president wanted to do it is because North Koreans are balking. I would be very surprised if Kim Jong actually agrees to get on a plane and fly far away from North Korea. That would be that no North Korean leader has done that in decades. So it's probably gonna have to be here. So that's interesting. You think there is a reason why we haven't learned about these discussions before now? Because we're, we're told that contact first took place over the Easter long weekend. Yeah, that's right. And that's good. I mean, if, you know, Donald Trump said he wants to do it. So, I mean, he's president. He gets to do it. But, um, you know, the last time we came close to a summit between the American president and North Koreans, it was after six years of negotiation. This was in 2000. Um, so, you know, I mean, if they're going to do this, if it's really going to be a, a real thing, if they're actually going to, like, make some kind of breakthrough or something like that, they've got to move very, very fast. They've only given themselves about eight weeks to hammer out the differences and the strategic and ideological differences between the United States and North Korea are just yawning. And I wonder if they can really do it this quickly. So I hope there's actually a great deal more cooperation and discussion going on in the background, because if they get in the room and most of the big issues aren't worked out, this thing's probably going to be a bust. Are America's objectives in terms of the summit with North Korea the same as those of South Korea and Japan? Yeah, that's actually a really good question under this president. I mean, if it was any other president than Donald Trump, I'd probably just say yes. Um, but, you know, Donald Trump has flirted with removing American forces from South Korea as sort of a lever against South Korea to sort of bludgeon it into a deal. He's done the same thing with the U.S. trade agreement with South Korea as well. I wonder, right? And of course, Trump is sort of prone to skylark and run off in his own direction. So it's hard to know if the president actually is really coordinating with uh, with the American allies out here. You know, I hope. Well, today, South Korea confirmed it's considering negotiating a peace treaty with North Korea ahead of a summit between the leaders of those two nations later this month. In your view, is peace on the peninsula possible and is North Korea determined to denuclearize? Yeah, I think the, the latter is, is pretty easy. I think almost everyone in the analyst community would say no. I think everyone would be amazed if the North Koreans were to give up nuclear weapons. If they didn't want nuclear weapons, they didn't need to build them. Um, they've been trying for 40 years to get them. It would be amazing if they just gave them up um, within the next two or three months or something like that. The concessions to get that out of North Korea would have to be enormous, right? Um, I think the uh, the real question is, what is the South going to give up, right? I mean, if there really is going to be a peace treaty, then then Moon Jae-in, the South Korean president, is going to have to give up a lot. And that's going to be very controversial. He, can't, he only won election with 41 percent of the vote. He can't go up there and trade away U.S. forces or do something really, really big because he'll face massive blowback back home. All right. Well, just finally, then, if North Korea isn't likely to denuclearize over the medium to long term, what do you think it is willing to give up? Yeah, that's actually a great question. And that's kind of what everybody's wondering, right? Because if you actually look at the last couple of months since the Olympics and everything else, you know, the last two or three months, the atmospherics have been great. You know, you have the joint sports teams and the musical troops and this and that. 
And that's really nice, but it's really, you know, it doesn't actually get to the real problems between the two sides. And in all the other discussions, in all the discussions so far, the North Koreans haven't actually made any suggestions about concrete concessions, right? I mean, North Korea agreeing not to strike us, for example, isn't really a concession. North Korea agreeing to permit family reunions isn't a concession either because it's basically costless for the North. I mean, what people really want is something like the IAE back in there, right, or a missile count or some movement on human rights. And so far, the North Koreans haven't given any of this. That's why I'm a little bit wary about these summits, because we shouldn't be giving stuff to the North Koreans unless it's a really solid quid pro quo. And the North Koreans haven't hinted at anything yet. Robert Kelly, it's been terrific to get your insights you. this afternoon. We're also looking forward to seeing you soon at the Sydney Writers' Festival. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for having me.